Hi everybody, this is Kevin, and I'm back to do a Zoom chat, the first one for a long time. And as you can see, I've got my friend Joe Tyler sitting sitting there. And uh, Joe and I have met a couple of times recently when Joe's been out on garden shows and doing his thing. We'll come to that in a minute. So hi Joe, how you doing? Yeah, all good. Kevin, how yourself? I'm not bad, mate. I'm not bad. Thank you very much. So in these Zoom chats, Joe, you may have seen some of mine on, on YouTube channel. I'm not sure. But how I always like to start these is I want to try and find out a little bit about the person behind the name. So can you just tell everybody a little bit about where you were, where you're born, where, where you were educated, a little bit about yourself just to start us all off. Just give us an idea. Yeah. So um, where I was, uh, I was born in Portsmouth. Um, and uh, so I think you can hear the dog barking again. <laughs> yeah, 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 me to carry on, or has it come through? No, yeah, no, it's come on. So um, what we've uh, so yeah, so um, I was from Portsmouth. Uh, well, not necessarily. I was, I was born in Portsmouth, but I'm sort of from Haven area around Hampshire. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so um, brought up uh, and Hall I'm, I live in Clanfield now, um, but I've been around Clanfield, Horndean, like most of my life anyway. Mm -hmm. So um, lots of family around. And uh, yeah, so um, and I uh, went to school in Horndean, and I studied uh, uh, art college in Southdown, so the first college I went to. Uh, mm -hmm. Then I went to forestry, and um, and then after that, yeah, I, was, um, I actually my main focus was blacksmithing. Right. So, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, so you, when you were at college, and you, did you say you did art? <clears throat> I did art. Yeah, art, yeah. art first. Yeah. Yeah. So during during your your spell at college and you were doing art, uh, as you said, you just, just said that you you got into blacksmithing. But did you get any idea of an interest of blacksmithing while you were at school? Because obviously, when I was when I was at school many many years ago, I, we, we, we did metalwork and things like that. So I don't know whether you might have got an idea from from that sort of thing. Not at all. Um, no idea. Um... When I was in school, my main, so the reason why, I mean, art was the only strength I really had in school, to be fair. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I picked up my maths and English when I got older, luckily in college. Mm -hmm. um, what my, my, uh, my dream job uh, for a long time was wanting to get into animation, so still mm -hmm. involved in art. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I had no idea about um, the idea of blacksmithing. It's just a, It wasn't in my sort of radar at all, really, mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, just basically just concentrating on art for the first, oh. when I left when I left school. Um, yeah, cool. yeah, and that's the only thing it was really just uh, just mm. just that was my main focus at the time. Mm. Uh, mm. Yeah. So I, I, you know, I, I've I've seen you know I, I think I think I first got in touch with you through a video I posted, which you saw and and you commented on, and then you and I started uh, communicating through messages and WhatsApp and stuff like that. And I've, I've seen some of your work now when you've been on some of these shows. Um, we, won't, we won't get onto the point of how you ended up getting as a blacksmith in just yet. We'll come back to that. But with your, with your blacksmith work, um, I know at the moment you're based down in Fairham, aren't you? That, that sort of area? Yeah, yeah, a little workshop in Fairham, yeah. Yeah, and then, but I know very shortly you're going to be moving into another workshop yeah that's right yeah yeah moving into another workshop in kingsley is the plan um yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and you and we briefly just to talk just before we came on that you've got something that's cropped up today which is going to be a future project for me for you which you're looking forward to which you're going to be building up over the next six months to a year um, so if you want to tell everybody a little bit about that. So, yeah, I mean, hopefully uh, somewhere a bit more local to where I'm from. So around Clanford Way, there's um, potential for courses to be run in the future and a possible another workshop basically as well on the side. So um, it's something that can be built up uh, in stages. And mm. yeah, it'd be nice because there'll be a team of us. There's me. Uh, I've got a friend who's a knife maker and two other uh, friends that are basically training as smiths. And the art, yeah, so it's, it's got potential for courses for all sorts of things in the future. So, yeah, so basically that's what's cropped up today. And I've uh, the rest of the weekend will be planning on uh, basically writing things down, planning for future ideas. And then 
hopefully in, in the new year, that sort of stuff will become apparent. Yeah. And, and, and obviously we can, we can stay in touch and, and we can do another, another Zoom chat later on once things have, have built up a little bit more on the new project, which will be great. We can keep in touch yeah, of that course, way. Yeah. But I also know that you also taught or teach um, smithing. But did you, were you not teaching at Chichester College? Yes, I was. So um, I got a teaching um, a spot came up basically. And uh, I was basically working a little bit on, the, on my own after finishing training. And then this teaching um, opportunity came across and it was for Chichester College. Um, and yeah, so basically I got involved with them and I'd done two and a half years there. Yeah. Um, and we, and I'm, I mean, when I was training, I was actually, when I had, um, which is hard to say these in this day and age, but when I did have a spare time, um, I was actually allowed to sometimes assist on the odd session every now and then, which gave me, um, I suppose, the sort of natural confidence to, when I was later on after finishing training, to actually go into teaching more, you know, mm. properly. Um, so I did have a few times in the past where it actually came quite comfortable to me. So yeah, and uh, I mean, it wasn't the future plan, mm. but it just it just unfolded, and it, and it's a nice balance. Yeah. In fact, when, when somebody saw you <clears throat> in the first when we were at Stanford House and at the garden show, and someone commented saying, "Oh my goodness, that was my son's teacher at Chichester College." Ah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I think the person we're, you know, is Fiona Cooper's son, George Timperley. Ah, okay. Yes, I'm, I'm, it's, it's coming back now because quite yeah. a lot of, remember, you sort of, um, there's, you're meeting and, and speaking to obviously new people all, all the time, all day. Yeah. And there are people like those little moments that were coming through. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm, yeah I'm pretty sure that was Fiona that commented that, that uh, you were his teacher at, at, at Chilister College. I think yeah, the, I think the name see it's like because because we go through so many people every year like exactly. student, but yeah. it does it does it does ring a bell. It does ring yeah. a bell. Yeah, yeah. As I say, I saw you. I saw you. Well, I met you for the first time at Stanford House, and we had a bit of a chat there. And, and I was watching you work, um, and uh, very impressed with what I saw. Um, but this, but you had two. two I think it was two young women there and are they the the the, the apprentices that you've got no uh, so uh, so you have her helen and and jade and uh, they both work for themselves um uh, i met jade through someone else like a mutual friend and found out she was just had her own little workshop um in chichester and she's sort of like she was she worked with someone for a year and a half in industry and then now basically is just working on her own and um so we formed together a little bit and my friend helen i know through other friends for years mm. and helen's basically a sculpture metal smith does bits of jewelry and she's actually worked um on quite a few projects so so, so we actually work as a team of three individually yeah. and sometimes together if if um yeah if there's a big enough job so really yeah we're just um, we were three different metal artists basically at the show mm. I noticed at the front of your, and I think she had it up at, um, or you had it up at um, Lowesley Park as well. So there was a, a display at the front with these, I don't know whether flowers or something on. on the yeah, they were giant, basically giant. I think they're like a pod. Uh, she based them off of like a, a sea pod and then she basically expanded them. So yeah, that was Helen's. That's the, Helen's piece. Um, yeah. And yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, that's what they're based off of, I believe, sea pods. And it's just yeah. basically. It's, yeah. It's like you zoomed in in a large scale. Maybe just a bit of work. I, I, I can sit, sit here looking outside now into my front garden and just see that sat there now. Yeah. I did, I did, say, to, to, I said, did say to her, I said, if that, if that goes missing, you know the person that's got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's, was, it's, it, was, it was lovely, lovely piece. I think um, it's, it's quite nice to, even if we're just showing examples, people, you know, don't know what we can sort of still do or what we can do and especially when you think of things for like the garden um, yeah, absolutely. so it's a very nice piece that stands out that was yeah yeah it does yeah, absolutely so let's let's backtrack a little bit joe because i know <laughs> that you didn't really get into blacksmithing per se without having another interest 
And if you'd like to tell everybody else what your, your other interest is, and then we'll talk a little bit about that. So I am a member of a early Saxon reenactment group called Herius Hundus. And at first I joined a group called Werod. So basically we're going back now 13, about 13 years ago. I was thinking about the idea of reenactment. I spoke to people from different periods, but I was always, for me, the Germanic Nordic area was just something that was, that was always in my interest. And weirdly enough, although I was only thinking about this, um, my, the job at the time I had, uh, my car broke down and for three days, only three days, I had to get the bus. Yeah. And it was on one of those three days, I got off the bus on one of those nights and in front of like the pin board that you sort of like the advertising boards you see around yeah. like you know, community centers, um, there was this uh, poster and I, could, I, I just knew that the artwork was depicting of uh, Germanic, something Germanic and it was Woden's face basically and it was an early medieval reenactment group poster and it was that was the group Werod um, who are who are local around South Sea I still believe and as soon as I saw that poster <clears throat> from walking from there to the house I contacted arranged a meeting and I just joined straight away um, and it was it was like I mean, there's coincidence, but like that was as close to the line as, as, as coincidence and fate, I think you can get to. And then um, I was with them for four, four and a half years. And, um, and then basically similar and um, sort of different interests in the whole, where a few of us peeled away from the group and we formed our own group, which is now Herius Hundas. Um, and that's been going now for about eight years. And yeah, and um in reenactment, I mean, some groups, they're just combat orientated. I mean, we're very combat orientated ourselves. However, we're very um, big on the living history side of things. And living history, you pick a skill of the time period, you get help and guidance to do it authentically of how it was done. And you can look at woodwork, dyeing clothes, food, leather, and metalwork was mm -hmm. definitely one of them. Now, it wasn't blacksmithing specifically. It was little bits of mending mail from the mail shirts and cold work. And that was my area of interest straight away for living history. So I started on that and then it was uh, someone just basically brushed past. So this is, so we're actually going back to the early um, in the other group first, a so very, the first, within the first year of reenactment, I was interested. And then I, I sort of, that's when the blacksmithing world and the eye opener of it's still around, it's expanding. It's this so many um, paths you can still go on. That's when it hit me. And um, someone just mentioned, I think they pretty much said, have you thought about going into it properly, like full time all the way? And as soon as they said that, something clicked. Like it was almost like, I suppose, if anyone's had that thing of, they've never thought about it until it, they, it come across them. And then it was like, it just made sense. And I found out through all other people, through other reenactment groups that, we, uh, that you meet when you do this um, sort of thing, and they all pointed towards the National School of uh, Blacksmithing, which is Hereford. And that was it. I, I got in contact with Hereford. And before you knew it, I, I'd done three years up there. And it's all thanks to reenactment um, uh, that I'm doing what I'm doing now. So actually, I mean, it's, it's, it's a hobby. It is, it is known as generally a hobby, but reenactment for me and a lot of others as well, it's, all, it's a, literally another it's like a second part of life. I mean, there's, yeah. for me, especially because of all this stuff. Yeah. So the long story short, it is all because of getting involved in historical reenactment is why I'm uh, now a blacksmith. Yeah. Yeah. So when, when you do these reenactments, how, how serious do you get with them? So we, there's an element of seriousness to the whole thing really, because it is, it is all about having fun at the end of the day as well. I mean, yeah. that's the main thing. But we're there to educate and entertain the public. So, um, and you, to do it, you, you want to um, portray the right thing. So, hence why, you know, why we call it reenactment. So, to reenact yeah. the, right, the, right, the right authentic way. Yeah. Um, com, you get, so, with the combat, although it, for, for an outsider, it looked quite chaotic you know I and mean, we do it's full contact you know it does uh, and you get bruises you get cuts but it's very well 
managed um, and like 99.9% .9 of people involved are all you know, sportsmanship is all good. So, and again, it's, um, it's good for fitness, it's good for confidence, um, and, it, and, and it's just a generally good thing all around when you, when you get involved in that. Um, and yeah, just the living history, it's just like portraying something in, in the right way of how it was, uh, and, and yeah. to educate. So it's, it's an all-rounder, really. So um, it's serious in the right times, uh, yeah. but fun overall. Yeah. But when, when you do these reenactments, so you've got, obviously you've got, two groups of people which are in, in a battle situation. But around the outside of the battle, do you have people, you mentioned about um, dyeing cloth and, and working with wood. So do you have displays going on of that sort of thing at the same time? Or, or is it just purely the battle scenes that you do? No, so, so living history is generally going on throughout the day. However, when there's uh, an arena slot for the combat, generally it pulls the whole crowd. So, um, but there are, there is still things going on, but it's the camp goes a bit quiet because the crowd is drawn over, but all the time before and after um, is, is, yeah, it's generally carried on. So people will be, whatever skill set they're doing, they'll be showing and doing like demos and talks on all aspects of the time period and the skills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and I believe, Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you've got a series of of um, um, reenactments and things like that. In, is it in September? We do. Yeah, there's um, we've got one of the biggest shows that um, so far that we're going to do. We do a lot with Butser Ancient Farm, very close with them. And, um, the in September, the I believe the 17th and 18th, whichever that one is, a weekend um, in September. The 18th um specifically so it's the weekend the 18th and 19th we're we're there um like a, a normal show each day however the 18th the evening of the 18th is a very very special night it's uh, a viking and saxon event the vikings are coming to attack butzer farm and us saxon are going to defend it we've defending it we've defended it against these people before and we're going to defend it again However, there's a live band and there is a special boat burning ceremony at the end for the public to witness. Um, so it's a very special evening. And obviously with all the, with everything that the world has gone through um, over the last year and a half, two years, it's, uh, yeah. it's quite a special thing to, to, to plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, so that's, on the, the, that's on the 18th, 18th of September. That's correct, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Um, let's just talk about your blacksmithing again, because I know you're very keen on the, shall we say, the historical side of it? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, it's, it's the same, it's, sorry to interrupt, it's the same with you with right. your historical reenactments. You want to try and get it as, as, as right as you can. And, and I know you told me once about the, the historical side and make sure that, you know, the correct things are being used the old-fashioned tools and things like that yeah i mean at the end of the day we've got a couple of the, 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 there are always the, the modernized version of tools that uh that we use in this day and age especially yeah, in a to keep a business going however um what the thing i really like about this craft is is the main thing is that piece of metal in the hand uh, yeah. on the anvil with a hammer is there's processes that haven't changed since since it since through before Iron Age, even, you know, through bronze. Um, and that element still stays with it today. And, uh, and there is no other way to do it. Um, and that's what's special about it. It's, um, it's methodical. And yeah, I mean, like, and, then, and you do get people that are specifically traditionalists. However, we have blacksmiths today, including myself, we do traditional work and also historical replicas, but we also do um, contemporary and modern. So that's why it survives to this day, because it's yeah. expanded on all paths. Yeah. Uh, when I was a boy, at the back of where we lived, my great-grandfather, he owned everything where we, where we were between Midhurst and Furnhurst. And there was an old blacksmith forge at the back of our place. And it had a brick-built kiln where you fired it underneath, um, I can, in my mind's eye now, I can see the old fashioned bellows. Um, yeah. And there was, again, in my mind's eye, I can see all the different tools hanging around the wall. It wasn't 
it wasn't used by our family, um, certainly not during my time anyway. But when, when the family had to sell that all off, I don't know what happened to any of that. It all just disappeared, which is such a shame. It's such a yeah. shame. It got lost. It probably got thrown away. And, you know, with guys like you about that are trying to keep as much of the old traditional stuff going as you can, when I think back of what was in that, in that old forge and it just disappeared, as I say, it probably got just chucked away. You know? and, and that makes me feel quite sad nowadays, thinking about the things that you guys do. Yeah, I mean, like, one light way of looking at that is um, there's a strong possibility that it's still in circulation because any tools that get picked up from anywhere to do with especially blacksmithing or any craft, it finds its way on the market still and, there's the, it's st and, and it ends up getting picked up by people like me. Um, well, so in, in, a, in a way, there's, you know, even, even when things are thrown away, there's enough, there's enough people out there that do find it and understand or know that, that, that it's, um, it's sought after. So yeah, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully some of that's in circulation in the world of blacksmiths. Yeah. yeah. And who knows, you may be having, using some of it. <laughs> yeah, because I have. I'm one of those people that pick as many things as I can. Because old tools, there's. Certain, I mean, we can make our own tools, but if there, there's so many well-made tools that just will never, will never break, um, especially yeah, sure. for hammers and tongs and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, look, Joe. I think we've covered pretty much everything we 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 can tonight. Um, we've talked about your blacksmith. We talked about your reenactment stuff, which is perfect. I know, and you know, that we are going to be um, being in touch again fairly soon. So yeah. all I will say to those people out there watching is watch this space. There's something on the, on the horizon. So, Joe, look, my friends, thank you very much for your time this evening. Um, thank you for having me. We finally got there. We finally got there, Joe. Yeah, we finally got there. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I am one of the most uh, busiest, um, sometimes organised and unorganised people going but yeah we it's managed it problem. it's not a problem as i've said to you before you just tell me when you're free even though it was seven o'clock and then it was 20 past seven and then it was 7 30. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, anyone who knows me that will see this will will, will know exactly that that's me yeah, yeah. that's what that's what joe's time is like anyway joe's i say thank you very much my friend you take care of yourself and we'll we'll speak again soon brilliant take care kevin okay cheers then thanks joe cheers. bye 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 If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to follow, like and subscribe to Kevin's Rambles.